I recently reviewed the iFixit FixHub soldering station, and I gave it a lot of compliments and a few complaints, including its high price and small tip selection. But when it came to you, the viewer, the overwhelming question was, what about the pine sole? What about the miniware? Two soldering irons that cost way less and have displays built in, unlike the iFixit soldering iron. Why would you buy this instead of these? Aren't they just as good for a lot less? And to be honest, I didn't know because I've never used either of these soldering irons until now because I went out and bought them. I've already spent a little time using each just to get familiar with them, but I also bought three identical Christmas tree soldering iron kits. Over the next few days, I'm gonna use each one to build these kits. And by the end of this, I'm sure I will have a strong opinion on which is best when and whether or not you should even buy the iFixit soldering station at all when something so affordable exists. Cue the soldering iron montage. Okay, so three Christmas trees, and the good news is they all work. So when you really get down to it, yes, all three soldering irons did the job. If that's all you care about, you could stop right there. But I feel like there is more to learn from this process. Yes, these are very simplistic projects that I did. You're attaching a few resistors and some LEDs and such. But that's what I wanted was something quick and easy to get a good sense of each soldering iron. And I found advantages and disadvantages to each. The pine sole is incredibly affordable. It's like $26 plus some shipping if you don't get it through Amazon. And that's really cheap. And you have some great options. You can go USB-C or you can go barrel jack. And the tip that comes with it is fine. 
And you have lots of tip options because it's compatible with multiple platforms. But it's really, really not ergonomic. Of, of the different soldering irons, this is the one where my hand hurt the most. If you just, I mean, look at that. It's just not built for regular hands. And by the time I was done, my hand was sore and this took me a couple of hours to do. The miniware, this is the TS80P to be specific, is actually far more ergonomic. It felt good in the hand. I think it comes down to this flared base right at the edge. That just makes it fit into your hand perfect. Now they do have a model of miniware that is similar to the pine saw, with including the double barrel jack and USB-C port. But this one is a little more expensive and I think a little nicer, even though you give up that barrel jack. It comes with a very fine tip, a very fine tip. And for a project like this, that was very useful because there were a lot of fine work items to do on here. But if what you need is something bigger and heavier, you'll have to switch tips. Again, lots of tip options. When it comes to both the pine sole and the miniware, there's a great big, huge advantage over the iFixit kit in that you have a lot more tip options. iFixit's only announced a few, like three shapes in multiple sizes with a potential promise to maybe do more. That's not a guarantee. These are pretty easy to find. iFixit's tip is not proprietary, but it is custom. That is to say, iFixit will let other people, other companies make their own tips and offer them. But just because they will, doesn't mean anyone actually will do that. So there's no guarantees there. So yes, at its very basic, the Pinesel and the Miniware did the job, but I found myself missing things from the iFixit model. In both cases, I had issues with fitting these soldering irons with the holder that I happen to have with my soldering iron kit. The Miniware slips right through and I didn't notice right away and I burned my cover. Not all the way through, but still. On the other hand, the pine sole doesn't slip right through, but it does get stuck, which was almost just as dangerous, more dangerous, because then I would have to carefully maneuver it out. It's actually, it was just stuck right now, actually. And then you run the risk of burning yourself. Now you can buy specific caps for these, but that adds to the cost. And speaking of adding to the cost, this is all you get for your $30 and your $80 with the TS-80P soldering iron. So you need to provide your own USB-C cord or barrel jack cable in this case, and you need to provide a power brick of some kind. If you want the fastest heating, you need a good one. I have a GAN charger, it is $45. My USB-C cords are like $10, but they're in, so that was an extra $55 to add on to the price. If you happen to own those things already, like I did, you don't spend any extra. That's the good news. If you don't, then you're going to have to spend extra. And if all you have is a USB-C brick that doesn't do 45 watt charging, your heat up times are even longer. So sometimes just saying these are cheaper isn't the whole story. This soldering iron by itself is $90. It does come with this cord and this cap. And I have to say, this cord is very nice. It's nice and flexible and it goes into just about any position you want without tangling. My USB-C cord that I just have laying around wasn't anywhere near as convenient. I was tethered to my plug over on this side. I had to use an extension cord to get myself far enough. I put it in here to keep it locked in place, but then my cord still had to come over here and it got in my way as I use these. But with the iFixit kit, I plugged into this battery and put it over here where it was more convenient. Now, you could buy a battery for these two soldering irons, but again, that adds to the cost. And see, that's the real difference between these three soldering irons at the end of the day. Luxuries, whether or not you have them. In these cases, out of the box, by default, you do not have certain luxuries, like a really great cord, like a battery, like fast cooling. These often didn't detect that I put them down for three to five 
minutes. And like fast heating, these typically took about 45 seconds to get fully up to temperature, even with my higher wattage USB-C cord. So what does that all mean as far as cool down and heat up speeds? Well, that just makes doing your project easier and faster when you've got something that can cool down when you're not using it and heat right back up. When I did these Christmas trees, it took me far longer to complete the project with these two soldering irons than it did with the iFixit kit. My montage earlier, the iFixit version was far less sped up and you can actually kind of see that if you go back and watch the video than the other two. Now some of that is practice. The more I did these, the better I got at it. But full disclosure, I actually broke one Christmas tree, had to order a fourth one and redo it. And so I did this version twice. You're seeing the second one in that montage and I still didn't do it as fast as the iFixit Christmas tree. It just is faster and there's something to be said for that. However, you do give up a luxury if you just buy this kit with the cap. Sure, you get the cap, you get the cord, you don't get a screen. And I don't know how I feel about that because here's the honest truth. I never once adjusted the temperature. Didn't have to. The default temperature for all these is the same and it's honestly what you need for most projects. There are occasions when you're gonna adjust temperature, especially as you switch between leaded and non-leaded solder when specific projects may call for higher or lower temperatures. Plus, you can get more life out of your tips if you go at a lowest temperature. But let's be honest, most people don't spend a lot of time adjusting temperatures. If that is you and all you want is the iron, then there's something to be said to, for the fact that you can do that right in here. And I should throw out some special mentions for the pine sole as well, because some of the things that I've mentioned about the iFixit kit, the fact that you can have it turn off really fast and come back on really fast is possible. The fact that the LEDs in here let you know when this is warm and when it's not is possible. This is an incredibly moddable soldering iron. You can buy a Hull Effect sensor and install it, and then that will magnetically detect when it's in a metal holder and then turn itself off immediately and detect when you pull it out and start heating back up immediately, much like the iFixit kit. You'll have to buy that sensor. You'll have to solder it to this somehow. So I guess now you need a second soldering iron. You can buy LEDs to install in this to make it so that you can see when it's hot and when it's cold. You'll have to buy those and install those. It's extra cost and extra effort. And at some point, I do start to wonder, why not just buy the iFixit kit, the full kit? But if all you want is just an iron, let's be honest, this is not your best option. Without that screen, you are relegated to plugging into currently a desktop computer Hopefully someday iFixit says you could plug it into your phone if they can get that figured out. But right now your desktop computer or laptop to adjust things like settings to do firmware updates. Yeah, you'll do the same thing for firmware updates on this, but you can at least adjust settings and temperature from in here. The Pine Sol and the iFixit are great because they won't roll away. What you've heard every time though, I know you saw it rocking back and forth, but it was gonna stop, I just stopped it. What you've heard every time I put this down though, is the Miniware rolling and rolling. And that's down to the ergonomics away. The Miniware is super ergonomic, but it's, it's ergonomic by being perfectly round, which makes it roll away. The Pine Salt is in no way ergonomic, but the advantage to the fact that it's not ergonomic does mean it's going to stop on its own because it has a flat edge. The iFixit soldering iron though, kind of is the best of both worlds. It's a sort of triangular shape to it and thus it won't roll away and it feels good in the hand. It actually feels more like a pencil than the pine sole does, which is kind of funny. If you made me pick just soldering irons, I admit I wouldn't get the iFixit one for 
I don't think I'd get the pine saw one for $30 either. Even though this is incredibly moddable, even though this does get the job done. My favorite to use was this for just this kit because it was very ergonomic, it had a good tip, and it heated up fairly quickly. This is a good option if you're looking for not spending a lot of money, about $80, and getting something that works out of the box without much need for adjustment. In fact, I didn't adjust anything, it just worked. On the other hand, if you are looking to just do one or two soldering projects, or if you are super, I wanna make this my own, the pine saw is a great option. And if you're gonna solder extensively, and you want something to take with you, and you want something that's gonna be ergonomic and really feel great in the hand, I can't say enough good things about the iFixit kit. It is expensive. There's no getting around that fact, but you get better quality product for the money. The battery is no joke. I got through this Christmas tree project in a few hours and I still had 90% of the battery left and that I was untethered from the wall made it more comfortable to use. That it is so ergonomic made it more comfortable to use. At the end of the day, none of these are bad options. They're all good options for the right purpose. I originally thought I was gonna return these when I was done with them, but I think I wanna continue using them. They're both good in their own ways. I think I wanna try modding this and see what I can do with it. And I think I wanna continue playing with this because it's just so nice in the hand. But I'm gonna be honest, since I have them all, I'm probably gonna end up defaulting to this soldering iron most often, just because it is so ergonomic it is so powerful, it is so fast. I'm not sure I can recommend one over the other. What I would say is, what is your use case? If your use case fits this or this or this, the good news is they exist and you should buy them. I'll have links down below just so you can take a look. Let me know what your thoughts are as well. Am I completely off base? Is there something I should have mentioned? Is there a feature in one of these that really matters? I know for instance, you can put firmware on here and use a boost button to get a higher set of temperature at times. And that's worthwhile, but the iFixit soldering iron kind of does that automatically without new firmware needed. Still, it's pretty cool that that's an option that you can add to this. Is there something else I missed? Is there a reason why this is the perfect one for you no matter what. Or is there a reason why maybe you want to upgrade to the, the iFixit someday? Let me know below. And while you're here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell. I've got a lot more projects coming. I'm going to try and fix this game gear, for instance, and hope I can get through it without breaking it. I'm going to post the video either way. But until next time, bye!